welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. I greet you this day, my dear friend, thanking you so much for joining us. I have been looking forward to this day, the first day for the broadcast week, and I pray that you had a great weekend in your local church, hearing the Word of God, rejoicing in the Word of God, applying the Word of God in your life. I even hope that over this past weekend you had the chance to declare the gospel found in the Word of God to a sinner that God is willing to save if they'll come to him. Well, right now my Bible is sitting open to the gospel of Mark, the last chapter, chapter 16. And uh, this week, Lord willing, we will come real close to ending the book of Mark. We're going to carry over into the next week, I believe, but we're coming real close here to the end of the gospel of Mark. So if possible, reach over, get your Bible, turn with me, please, the gospel of Mark in chapter 16. When I was a boy, a whole lot of people were using a phrase to refer to what you learned in school. They, they referred to going to the school to learn the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now, any youngster today would probably hear this and realize that two of those words don't even begin with the letter R and would come to the conclusion that the older generation really was a little bit wacky, and I don't think I could uh, could blame the kids for that. But I go through there because I have three R's for you today, and yes, each of the words really does begin with the letter R. These three R's will help us uh, get a practical handle on the angel's announcement to the women that Jesus had risen from the dead. The resurrection of Christ was first announced by a heavenly being. That tells us of the importance of this truth. And the first announcers, uh, humanly speaking, were women. That goes contrary to the culture of that day. But if you remember much at all about Jesus and his ministry, uh, even while, as he met with a woman at the well, Jesus was not necessarily feeling like he was held captive by the culture. You join me in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 16. I really want you to make this a two-way communication. I'm going to give you a text messaging number here in just a second. I'll give it as well at the end of the broadcast. I would like you to give me feedback on what you think about this broadcast. I'm going to give you a text messaging number right now. Text the word gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, to this number. Area code 708-515-4086. Again, that's 708-515-4086. And as I said, text the word gospel, and you'll begin to immediately get a feedback from me. I want you to also wait to the end of the broadcast when my announcer comes back on, and he will give you the means by which you can give to us your name and address. I want to give you a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. One in my hand right now is entitled A Would-Be Suicide. A Would-Be Suicide. Almost every time I talk about this track, I talk about how a man was in a restaurant getting ready to uh, eat, and he was contemplating his own suicide until he saw a 16-year-old girl do something that stopped him in his tracks and uh, opened up for him the opportunity to have his life transformed by the gospel. What did that 16-year-old girl do? Well, friend, you and I do impact one another's lives, don't we? Here's a great track, a would-be suicide, a testimony track. I think you'll find it useful in your own personal evangelism. So, as I said, when my announcer comes back on and gives you the means by which to communicate with us, giving us your name and address, please do uh, take advantage of that and get a sample packet of our tracks. 
the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. Let me begin reading at verse 5 right now. And entering into the sepulcher, this is the women. Now they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid." Last week, I said that I had divided chapter 16 up into six parts and given each part a title with a word beginning with a letter A. Let me give you all of them right now for the entire chapter. In verses 1 through 4, we have the arrival, the arrival to see Jesus. In verses 5 to 8 that I just read, we have the angel about Jesus, the angel telling about Jesus. We're going to see in verses 9 to 14, the appearances of Jesus. Then verses 15 and 16, the announcement by Jesus. Then verses 17 and 18, the amazement due to Jesus. And then 19 and 20, the ascension of Jesus, the ascension by Jesus. Now, Let's come back here to the verses here. We have this angel talking about Jesus. When the women arrived at the tomb to see uh, uh, the, uh, to anoint the body of Jesus, they see the door is pushed away from the opening and their curiosity is absolutely piqued. And they go into the tomb and there they see an angel. Notice here, my three R's. Remember at the beginning, my three R's are number one, their reaction in verse five. Their reaction to seeing this angel, they were affrighted. Their innermost being was all tied up in knots. Their their expectation was to find a dead body, but what they found was no Jesus at all. They did see the grave clothes there, to be sure, but far more frightening uh, at this point was that angel. It's just that the angel looked, it's not that the angel looked scary to them, but that these ladies were afraid of angels, and they thought if you saw an angel, you would die, and they were confused in their minds and hearts about, no, Jesus, and here's this angel. My second word that begins with the letter R, is I move from their reaction to the reality based upon verse 6, the reality. In essence, the angel tells the ladies two basic things. Number one, be calm. And number two, do come. Be calm and do come. Literally, what the angel said here is stop being amazed. That's really the the impact of the Greek language. Stop being amazed. They were just gawking here at at what they were seeing. He's in essence saying, get your thoughts together, gals, and and get, uh, get a reality grip on what your eyes are telling you. He is not telling the women to have an emotional experience. He's telling them to have a tangible truth experience. The Savior that was crucified is not here. Then the angel invites the women to come and see the place where Jesus had been laid. They sure weren't going to see Jesus there, but all they were possibly going to be able to see was the place and the niche that had been cut into this rock and the clothes, the grave clothes that had been left behind by the risen Lord. All right. We had the reaction. We had the reality. Jesus is not there. And now the responsibility of these women based upon verse 7. The special honor of being the first to know about Jesus' resurrection brought a great responsibility. I'm going to say that again. The special honor of being the first people to, to know about the resurrection of Christ brought a great responsibility to these ladies. They were to go and tell the disciples about what they had seen and what they had not seen. This is always the way it is, friend. The Lord never gives you and me biblical truth, biblical information just to make us smarter. He gives us truth so that we can, well, be assigned a task. God's messengers 
gave, uh, God's messenger gave to these women a task. He gave them direction where they were to go with this news. They were to go to the disciples. God gave them not only direction, he gave them a destination. Uh, the uh, he tells the disciples uh, go tell the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee at the place that had already been arranged before Jesus died and lastly he not only gave them a direction a destination the ladies here the last thing we see about them is their demeanor as they go the women uh, begin immediately to obey, but verse 8 says they obeyed quickly. Their hearts, by the way, were, were held captive by what they saw. They were in amazement and, and wonder at this unbelievable news of a living Savior. And, and verse 8 tells us that they made the telling of this news to the disciples their undivided assignment, their undivided job. They did not do anything else. They didn't speak to anyone else. They focused on their responsibility. Now, there's been a lot that I have just walked through here in hurried fashion in these verses. How does this impact you and me. What do you think about this this broadcast today and what the angel told these ladies? And you and I need to apply this, don't we? I'm going to do that for us in just a moment here, but I do want your feedback. Would you text message me? Now, some of you listening do not get involved in text messaging, and that's fine. But, but dear friend, if you are involved in text messaging, would you text me the word gospel? I'm going to give you the number here. This is just for text messaging. You can't get tracks through this. But text message me the word gospel to area code 708-515-4086. Here's that number again. Text the word gospel to 708-515-4086. All right, how do we apply this passage to us? Well, dear believer, let's you and I talk together. Have you and I forgotten the wonder of what we know? These ladies were caught up in what they had just discovered. They discovered truth, and they were caught up in it. They were in amazement. The truth, frankly, frightened them. Now, friend, have you and I forgotten the wonder of the truth that's been revealed to us Somebody told us about the risen Savior. Have we lost the wonder of that news? Have you and I forgotten that God imparted the saving knowledge uh, to us? Somebody told us, but dear friend, that news was imparted to us, yes, to save us, but not just to save us. It was imparted to us that we might pass it along, just like these women were given truth to pass it along. I plan, frankly, I plan to pass along the knowledge of the saving truth of Christ to another person today. Why not join me in that commitment today, not tomorrow? Don't plan. Don't plan about doing it someday. Make today the day you give out a track. You tell somebody with your mouth, eyeball to eyeball, dear friend, the Bible says there's a heaven to be won and a hell to be shunned, and Jesus is the way to heaven. Oh, friend. Let's take the truth we know and pass it on like these ladies were commissioned here. Only instead of an angel telling us to pass it on, our Savior tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.